Welcome to A Shot of Ag. My name is Rob Sharkey. I'm a fifth generation farmer from just outside of Bradford, Illinois. Today though, today we're gonna to be talking with Justin and Ellen Rand. How are you guys doing? Good. Good. You're from Mount Carroll. Yes. Tell people where that's at. So Mount Carroll is 13 miles from the Mississippi River mm -hmm. and about 45 minutes south of the Wisconsin line. Okay. I'm from Bradford, Illinois and growing up, uh, they always said Bradford, Illinois was the coldest spot in Illinois. When I go to look at Mount Carroll, what do I see? Where's the the record set. Apparently you guys are the coldest spot. And you know how cold you got? No. Negative 37. I think that was Celsius, so because it's Google, <laughs> you know how they do. Metric. Yeah. Do you remember that day? It wasn't, what, a few years ago? Uh, I was actually at an NCBA cattlemen's convention in New Orleans. If somebody was taking care of your cattle, yeah. that's, that's that ain't right, man. That's called hired labor. <laughs> he doesn't work for us anymore either, so. Ellen, <laughs> were you like. with him? Or I was. Were you? Okay. I might have been on Bourbon Street, but I was there. <laughs> that, that, okay, the whole thing. And I don't, I'm not going to make a big deal about but this was my childhood, right? This is all we had because we don't have a dollar store. We don't have anything else, but Bradford was the coldest spot in Illinois. Yeah, I don't know. It gave us something. There was T-shirts <laughs> made up. I'm not even joking. But now everybody can Google, my whole childhood was a lie. <laughs> well, I mean, maybe during your childhood it was, but 2020 we took it no, over. No, you guys fed the record since 1930. Oh. And oh. you lost I it did not know that. and then got it back. Uh -huh. So there was no, Bradford wasn't mentioned at all. It was a lie. That's the way it used to be. You guys are younger, but before Google, I mean, you could, hey, I invented uh, the Tic Tac container, right? You could do anything, and no one would say anything. They're like, oh, I, I don't think he did, but I'm not going to say that, but it's going to get rude. Now you can go in the corner, and you can Google who invented the container that Tic Tac candies go in. You two seem very uninterested in this. Sorry. <laughs> Maybe with global cooling, you'll get it back. Okay, you guys farm up there, Mount Carroll. Uh, did you grow up on a farm? I did. Uh, went to college in uh, Cedar Rapids at Kirkwood Community College and come back to the family farm. And in 2014, I started farming with her parents and as well as I got my own ground as well. Okay. And so, Ellen, you obviously you grew up I on grew a farm. I grew up on a farm. And what, what type of farm? Uh, so we've kind of done it all, I say. We at one point had a dairy, had Oof. hogs. Now we're just beef cattle. Um, it was the easier route. Do you, did you milk? Uh, I remember the parlor yeah. and being there, but I was very young. That's so. work. Yeah. Every Actually, morning. That's crazy. That was kind of like what my dad's family was known for. So my grandparents had actually started a dairy when they moved to Northern Illinois. Mm -hmm. And so dairy kind of was in their background. Where'd you guys meet? A bar? Poopies. Huh? Poopies. Yeah. It's a bar in Savannah. <laughs> it's a biker bar. It's a bar called Poopies. poopies. Mm -hmm. You can get the big poop there. With extra poop sauce. <laughs> we should have brought a menu. I, don't, I really don't know where to go from here. <laughs> is it, what, it, what kind of bar is it? A biker bar. It's a I biker mean, bar. You can get a tattoo there. You can get... Uh, can you get bait? Probably. Yeah. I mean, it's along the Mississippi. Along the river. Are you guys so, bikers? No. no. You just went to meet each other. They got good food. Okay. I was where, I was there with some of my friends, and it was uh, I think all you could eat shrimp night or something. Yeah. Nice. And because uh, you know I like all you can eat meals, yeah. and she was but there. There's shrimp, and it's in Illinois. Right. It's right. a long ways from an ocean there. <laughs> but she was there. Uh, one of her friends was it cousin was playing in the band. Brother. Brother was playing in the band, yeah. and she was actually. Ellen was actually talking to one of my friends and they were talking about cattle and this and that what was going on this summer. And that's when my radar opened up and was like, a female talking about cattle. That gets a, gets a guy going, doesn't oh, it? Oh yeah. Whew. <laughs> the mating rituals of Mount Carroll, right. Illinois. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you no longer farm with your family, correct? Correct. Okay. So was that just a deal where there wasn't room for you or you just were moving over working with her family? Uh, no, it was a transition of, there was, there was plenty of room at my parents' farm. Actually, I'm the oldest of five children. Um, and uh, my other two brothers still farm with mom and dad. And um, it was just a, 
uh, I wouldn't say better opportunity, but um, farming with family can be difficult. And those no. that can make it work. No. <laughs> no. We don't talk about that. I've been there. I mean, I've worked with my dad, and now I'm working with my oldest son. And both times, I've never been the problem. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> never heard that. No, not at all. <laughs> and Alan, so you also have an off-farm job. I do. Too. I've got a couple. Okay. Well, it's, well name one. Um, so one, I am a channel seedsman or dealer. I sell corn and soybeans to guys throughout our neck of the woods. Okay. And then my other one, I work for Bird's Eye Foods, and I procure green beans, carrots, and sweet potatoes. So, okay, just like the bird's eye, I don't know, I don't buy groceries. So, but okay, that's you eat the... like a steam fresh bird's eye packet that's got green beans in it. Yeah. I was in the field at some point. Okay. Um, they do different things like with the carrots, there's Marie Calendar, Chicken Pot Pies, P.F. Chang, like a whole bunch of different names. Are the carrots from up in your area? They're from all over the U.S. and Canada. <laughs> so they bring them all into, Yeah. where is the, the factory? Uh, Darien, Wisconsin, so just across the Illinois state line. Okay, is that far from where you live? About two hours. You go to, into work two hours every day? No. Oh, it's no, remote? I've got the great job that I could to go to the fields if I want. Yeah. If I need to go to the plant, I could go to the plant, or if I'm just gonna work from home, I'm gonna work from home. How do you learn about carrots? Oh, it's been a survival of the fittest for me. So I knew nothing about carrots going into this job. Yeah. Um, actually, they're a pretty easy crop to handle. Um, is it really? Because I, I heard the whole carrot thing was like underground. It is underground, yeah. Maybe Bradford could be the <laughs> carrot capital of the world of <laughs> Illinois. It was, it was a joke. Yeah. Under, <laughs> underground. Because <underground. laughs> they grow underground, get it. Yeah. Anyways. <laughs> yes, yeah, so no more ripping on Bradford. <laughs> We take it enough. <laughs> <laughs> but not only carrots, you had to learn about the other stuff, green beans, and I wouldn't even know how to grow any of that stuff. So I actually, I had done um, seed corn production in Wisconsin, yeah. and we got engaged, and I was gonna have to come home to Illinois because for some reason he didn't wanna move the farm for me. I don't know why, but. Stubborn. Right. Yeah, stubborn, yeah. <laughs> yeah so. Um, the company that I was working with, I had the ability to transition over to green bean production. Mm -hmm. And so I took that on and that's where I started learning just basically from the ground up. And you're you're wanting to move on from that. I am. Yeah, why? I'm gonna retire. You're a little young to retire, <laughs> aren't you? I don't know, vegetables is kind of straining, so. It's, it's funny. <laughs> Sorry. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> I do the jokes here, by the way, but that's. My that's, bad. That's funny. <laughs> so in January? Oh, I'm hoping it's before that. Um, oh. I don't, I'm hoping not to make it through all of Carrot Pack hey, this You can fall. quit anytime you want. Yeah, I actually, I think I quit in January, but okay. it's fine. <laughs> and uh, you're selling the, the seed corn and beans. Yep. I mean, how's that going? Great. Hey, you have to talk to neighbors that way, right? I do. Oof. Yeah, I got to see what they're doing. Really? Yeah, and then we got to make sure we get the planner out before them, but... Oh, that, I, I get that. <laughs> so what's that like just pulling up to some uh, farmer's farm? Because most farmers are old, right? I can say this because I'm a farmer. We're, all, I'm, I'm, we're on the young side of farming, but right. you're pulling up there as a woman to a, a guy that's been buying seed from a man for the last 50 years. How's that go? Um, I think it actually gets better and better as it goes on. Um, I think some of the guys see me out there in the fields walking and kind of see that I'm actually there looking out for them mm -hmm. and it kind of transitions into more and more business eventually. Nice. I actually had a farmer one time that I'd worked with for a year that never led me to believe he had any doubts in me and after that first year he flat out told me he said I didn't think this was going to work because you're a female. He's like but I'm here to tell you I was wrong and so I thought that was one really awesome that he never led up me to believe that the whole time but two it was really awesome and rewarding too at this that he acknowledged that. Yeah. I mean, I'm doubting this interview. <laughs> that wasn't me either. <laughs> <laughs> he still, that, that he still doubts me, but. <laughs> <laughs> so who's all involved in your farm now? Uh, so we got two full-time hired hands and we share workload, you know, we're over at their parents' place, or her parents' place, which is 25, 30 minute commute from, uh, uh, our place, and that's where most of the cattle are located, and 
Uh, her dad's got a full-time hired hand and a part-time guy, mm -hmm. so we just all work together. And what all are you raising? Uh, we got uh, mother cows. We, f we finish those calves out. And so you could say we're a backgrounder slash uh, feedlot. Um, then we got corn, soybeans, alfalfa, wheat. And then we raise some specialty crops on the side. We do oats for the cover crop business and rye as well. Uh -huh. For our non-farming friends that are watching, tell, tell me what a cover crop is. It is a crop that uh, I would say is not considered to be uh, a corn, soybeans, your wheat. It is a crop that is going to be used to either help with soil erosion, um, soil health, mm -hmm. and then be terminated before the, the intended crop is to be produced. You're not making money off a cover crop. You're not selling. Okay, I shouldn't say that. Right. Look, at, you were already giving me the side eye on that. You aren't. You aren't looking to harvest a crop off a cover crop. Uh, yes and no. Ninety percent no, unless you're a, a beef cattle guy, where you are harvesting the forage, mm -hmm. you're grazing the forage, chopping, baling, whatever. But in ninety-nine percent of the field applications that we do, we're cover cropping in front of corn or soybeans, for the practical reasons of soil health, erosion, you know. Corn is raised on our crops from May 1st till November 1st, and then that soil sits dormant. If we can raise a crop and keep building, you know, let the microbes eat on something and, and whatnot, mm -hmm. then we're trying to do what's right. We've used it on our farm uh, for some of our weedier places. It does help with weed control. You can come in there and just kind of smoke everything in the spring and then plant right into it. It's, it's worked well. We, with the, we have a white-tailed deer outfitter, so we do food plots, mm -hmm. which a lot of the same stuff I'm putting in the food plots, you're probably putting in these cover crops, yeah. radishes and turnips. They get huge, mm -hmm. and they really go down there, and they break up the soil in a way that tillage probably can't. Yeah. Uh, it's been difficult to get uh, a lot of wheat acres up north this year, I say up north compared to here, um, just because of uh, the price of wheat last fall was around $10, so a lot of guys thought, well, I'm not going to buy $1,200, $1,500 in hydrates, so I'll put wheat out, and wheat was an exceptional crop this year, it did phenomenal. It was some of the best ever wheat that they had for the lack of moisture, but getting cover crops established in this drought year has just been real tough. I mean, yeah. right now we got radishes the size of a pencil and they should be the size of a carrot. Yeah. How did you get into it, the whole cover crop thing? So when I started helping her dad out in 2014, um, some neighbors then were dabbling in the cover crop world. They bought a pallet of rye from FS or another dealer and they wanted to use her father's drill as well as a tractor and a laborer to run the drill. And her dad's got a 15-foot drill and ended up putting in about 400 acres of cover crop that year for his neighbors. And the next year it was doubled. And it was at that point in time I realized that my time is more valuable than at 15 feet at a time across the field. 15-foot drill, is it with a John Deere 750? 750, yeah. yeah. Those, those things were in the 80s into the 90s. Everybody had them. I've put in a lot of acres with a 15-foot drill. And it makes me want to hurt things <laughs> it's horrible uh, it is it, it's terrible because I mean literally you feel like you're not going anywhere right yeah are you still doing it with a 15-foot drill nope so uh, that after that second year I ended up buying a 42-foot uh, air seater and uh, <laughs> that's we, a little bigger <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> I went for a 15 to 20 foot no let's let's just go ahead and go big <laughs> so that has drastically changed the efficiency. I bet as it As well has. as picked up more acres. Plus your sanity. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I still don't think we have sanity at the end of fall, but. Okay. It's a yeah. very, very good point. Like last year. Yeah. Again, I do the jokes. Sorry. Yeah. No. It's <laughs> <laughs> but has it gone well? I mean, are people adapting to the cover crops? Yep. Uh, I would say there's more acres actually spun on with fertilizer. You know, if we get timely that's, rains. Honestly, that's what we do. It's yeah. cheaper. Yeah. They don't have to see me, but they can still buy rye from me. I wasn't going to mention it because it kind of puts you out of business. Not really. Hey, I tr I'm trying to calve cows. Yeah. I'm trying to dry corn, ship corn, 
uh, keep the combine going and seed wheat and rye at the same time. So spin away. Yeah. <laughs> we also like grow the rye though, so technically it wouldn't completely be cutting us out. Oh yeah. So okay. Uh, I th I would have thought maybe you guys were a little north for cover crops. Yeah. Um. Uh, rye and wheat works well, especially yeah. for. The, the grass style, but if you're going to put radishes in behind soybeans, yeah, we're too north. Okay. Not going to lie. Why is there a shoe on my desk? <laughs> we were told to bring a conversational piece. Good. Let's have a conversation. Okay. <laughs> I mean, uh, didn't realize this was old Mother Hubbard talk. <laughs> and that, is she the one who lived in the shoe? Old Mother she Hubbard? Was. Yeah. Yeah, had so many kids. What size is this? 18. That's a big, uh, it's a, got cow crap on it. That's a big. Fresh off the feedlot this yeah. morning. You don't get that on other PBS shows. So that's, <laughs> I hope they're getting a, the shot of this because that kind of hurt to do. Yeah. So I've got 13 and it looks like, I look like a, a, a little person compared to you. Yeah. How tall are you? Uh, six, eight. Okay. Well, see, that's not fair. <laughs> Okay. They'll edit out how it struggled, how I struggled right. to get my leg up here. Yeah. Boy, that's a, they say a good building needs a good foundation. You can walk on water yeah. when it's frozen. Ellen, we got your shoes too, yeah. but you're, it's, I'm a little not, smaller. But it's probably got more uh, cow crap on it. It, it probably does. Yeah. What kind of shoe is that? On is clouds. That? I don't know what that is. They're the best tennis <laughs> shoes ever. Are you joking? No, I'm serious. Is it like a Fisher Price? <laughs> no. So oh. on, it's like a Swedish brand, but. Um, I used to have plantar fasciitis really bad, and I transitioned to those tennis shoes, and okay. I don't have it anymore. I'm, I'm glad it made you happy. Yeah. I prefer to buy my shoes from a country that takes a stand every once in a while. Oh. America. <laughs> 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 you guys are also involved in uh, leadership. Ellen, what uh, what do you sit on? What board? I'm on the Illinois Corn Growers. I'm District 2 Chair. So okay. I represent uh, Joe Davies, Stevenson, Ogle, Carroll and Whiteside counties. What does one do on the, the corn board? On corn growers, so we're like the policy side. So we sit in at, we have Corn Congress actually down at the Commodity Classic okay. where we're trying to implement new policies and procedures at a national level that are gonna best represent our farmers. You corrected me because there's two, it's confusing, it right? Is. Because there's two separate boards. There is. So there's a growers board, which is like your policy, marketing, which is your checkoff. Mm -hmm. So they're the ones that get to take all your money and do fun research projects. And you have to wade through policy. I do. Do you like that though? Um, actually, I've enjoyed it quite a bit. I've learned a lot of new things from the other side and seeing different angles that I appreciate more. Okay. And Justin, you sit on the Illinois Beef Association? Yep, I recently just moved to the uh, policy side. I had served uh, two full terms on the checkoff side for Illinois Beef. And now I'm on the policy side. Again, for our non-farming friends, explain what a checkoff is. So a checkoff is um, it's governed by our federal government, but it's it, simply you could say a tax. But uh, all, most commodities got it. So wheat's got it, corn, soybeans, pork, dairy, beef. And I'm poultry, not, I eggs. think poultry's got it, but I'm a not going to get it. Even like propane. Correct. I sure. mean, it, a lot of, I don't know, commodities. Have Fertilizer's that. got it. There's yeah. a tax on that. Mm -hmm. um, and th that, that uh, money that is pulled away is considered a checkoff. And a checkoff um, is money that goes to the national um, organization and then it trickles down to the state organizations. And uh, that money is only supposed to be used for promotion, mm -hmm. for research, for, um, let's say, sustainability. But a lot of it's into um, promoting our products, whether it's here in America or overseas for export or teaching, you know, these, uh, like in beef, you know, we got China, we got Japan, you know, teaching those people that always cooked with chicken or other foods um, how to implement beef into the ration or pork into the ration. Or the ration. Probably I mean, doesn't make the, the chicken farmers happy, though, huh? Probably not. We're all fighting for the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, though. With the checkoff, it can't go into the policy side because, uh, yeah. I it's mean, illegal. You, you, well, and you might not agree. In theory, like if I have to, if I'm forced to pay a checkoff penny, 
and that goes to uh, a candidate that I vehemently, vehemently, I really don't ag agree with, uh, then that wouldn't be right either. Correct. So, yeah, but we're all promoting the products. Uh, you guys were awarded Illinois Soybean a 20 Under 40 Award. Yep. What does that mean to you guys? We got a really nice hat. It is a, it is a hat. <laughs> yeah. No, it is a nice hat, but I'm. We'll just say it's a hat. It's a hat. Yeah. Yeah. Did you, you just get one hat? No, we each got one. Each got a hat. Okay. Yeah. I might have to talk to the soybean folks. Maybe we could bling up a hat a little bit or something. Right. And you guys are the, the cream of the crop, the best of the best. You would think that it'd and be something a little. There's your hat. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> How does one get nominated for this award? We got nominated by our peers. I got nominated by Illinois Beef Association. Mm -hmm. I was nominated by Illinois Corn. Okay. So yeah. to think that there's other people that like me, that's kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> but do you win, you, you didn't win separately, right? We did. We did? Yeah. Oh, you both won? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is there a ranking system? Uh, I don't. If there was, we didn't get to see it. But <laughs> that would be fun would to like see. To think alphabetically, it. she's in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> well, what does it mean? Because yeah, yeah, what you guys do, you're working for yourselves, your family, your farm. Uh, what does it mean that actually somebody comes in and recognizes you both that you are improving agriculture in your part of the world? To me, it's humbling, you know, just that somebody, I, I try not to be front and center. I guess that's why you're on TV and we're a visitor. Vanity. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> but I try to be a part of association boards, uh, whether it's a church board or, um, you know, we were on 4-H back in the day and that kind of taught us leadership and, you know, our, our parents or grandparents taught me at least, and I'm sure her side as well that um, you know, be a, be a spokesman for what you're a part of, whether that's ag or whether that's a different job. But um, for me serving on beef and her serving on corn, we feel like that's our way of giving back to our, our roots, our, you know, because if we don't speak up, there's gonna be four or five other people that are against us. Mm -hmm. And in the animal rights world, we see that day to day. Yeah. Ellen, what are your thoughts on that? I thought it was pretty rewarding and very humbling too at the same time that somebody's taking recognition towards all the extra hard work we're putting in. Mm -hmm. I feel like we're also in our building stages of our lives in our farm where we're probably putting in a lot more extra work at this point so that in the future we can hopefully enjoy it a little more. That, I mean, that's the goal, yeah. right? Yeah. I remember being your age, it, there yeah. wasn't much free time, Yeah. but hopefully it all pays mm -hmm. off in the end. I find it scary because it just reminds you that 40 is coming pretty fast. <laughs> why, don't you, why don't you shut your mouth? Because <laughs> 50 is coming too. Yeah. <laughs> if people wanted to find you guys on social media or the old internet, where would they go? Uh, we've got a Facebook page called RNH Seed Solutions. Uh, on Twitter, my handle is Seed Corn Girl. Clever. And I know. How did you get, how long have you had that? A long time, actually. I was going to say, yeah, I can't believe that's not gone. Yeah. <laughs> I think I've had it since 2012, if not longer than that. Okay, so, yeah, you've yeah. done that. Yeah. Okay, Any, anywhere else? Are you on social media? He's got media? Twitter, too. I got Twitter. I'm at green t 800 but yeah. I, I just scroll through and look at all the things I want to see. Green, I'm not very active. <laughs> green T800. I had yep. a green T800. Can we? Well, I still got a green one. Okay. It's I, when I wanted to get Twitter, I said I wanted to get... Um, like at Justin Rand, and she's like, "No, do something different." Yeah. So. Mine's a, I got eighty four thirty. It's the best tractor ever made in my Twitter handle. See? A lot of farmers will do that. Though. You, mm -hmm. Why would you have that? Well, that's my first combine or whatever. We're we're odd people, aren't we? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I do. I want to thank you guys for because that was a long drive. You coming down here to Peoria, so I want to thank you guys for doing that. Also, want to thank you guys for what you're doing for agriculture. It would be easy just to, well, it would be easier to just farm, you know, do your, your seed selling and that, but also to do the leadership on top of that. That says uh, a lot about you too, not just as a couple, but as individuals. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Not very, good, you, with, not you, very good with compliments, are you? No. <laughs> have you been in any party leadership? You know, that's a, boy, I'll be darned if we're not out of time. <laughs> I've got kicked out of more. <laughs> commodity groups and you'll <laughs>
All right. <laughs> Score, <laughs> Justin and Ellen Rand. Thank you guys very much. Everybody else, we'll catch you next time.